ki o rano tātou katoa. Tuatahi me tuku haka moimiti ki ngā tua tua i whakapuno puno hea o mātou mātua tūpuna i te wāia rātou hi koe koe nungo i te mato te pino. Ka piti hono ki a rātou ko moe mai, toi tūana te whare nei ki a tātou i te hunga ara, te nā koe, te nā koe, te nā tātou katoa. Ka huri. The treaty needs to be talked about again, and I think this is a good opportunity for Paul to talk about the treaty again. I think we get the impression that we know about the treaty. Uh, I think Māori need to learn about the treaty themselves. Uh, some tend to think, some people tend to think that Māori know all about the treaty, but they really don't know anything about the treaty. <laughs> My name is Mona Jackson, um, I'm from Ngāti Pro and Ngāti Kahumunu, and you'll hear a lot of me today. One of the difficulties with the treaty is that people have made it unnecessarily complex. The Crown, for example, has deliberately tried to complicate it so that it becomes a preserve of an elite of lawyers or judges and so on. When you actually look at any treaty, it's simply about relationships. So my name is Ingrid Hugens. It's Hogens in Dutch. Um, both my parents um, came here in the 1950s to Auckland. They came here the way a lot of more recent migrants have done, feeling quite clear that New Zealand's a bicultural country and expecting to interact with Māori culture and coming in with probably the rudiments of a treaty in their minds and then arriving to find a British colony in place. So we expected a bicultural country and it didn't come. So I've had that ideal in my mind ever since. Uh, kia ora koutou, um, my name's Mike Davison. Um, I live in central Auckland and I'm a part-time painter and my studio is here in Kingsland. And uh, I work at DDB Advertising four days a week, Monday to Thursday, and on Friday I paint Hi, my name is Summer Piep Ta, but people mainly know me as Piep. The uh, mediums that I use to paint in is uh, mainly black ink or black paint. I was born here in Auckland. My mum's Cambodian and my father's from Te Amuru. My name's Sophia Minson. I'm a self-taught artist. I've been painting with oils on canvas for the last five years. I'm of European and Māori descent. On my father's side, he's mostly English, and on my mother's side, we've got Ngāti Poro heritage as well as um, Irish and Swedish. And I work from my studio, which is my home in Glen Innes. Kia ora, I'm Kura. I'm an artist and an art educator. Just recently returned to the north, and I'm a grandmother. Malale, my name's Dagmar Dyke, I'm a painter printmaker, married to Lyle, we've, we've got three beautiful children. My father is German and my mum is from Tonga, but she has German ancestry as well. Kia ora, my name is Chris Bryant, I'm a contemporary Māori artist, I paint and sculpt. I also teach here at Te Wānanga Aotearoa at Toi Mairangi in Hastings and I teach multimedia. Hikurangi is my mountain, Waipu is uh, my river, and Ngāti Pro is the iwi or the tribe that I descend from. Most of what has been written, most of what has become the received wisdom about the treaty is what the Crown has said, what lawyers have written, what judges have decided. And yet there are stories that are embedded deep in this land about the treaty that give a quite different way of seeing, give a quite different perception of what the treaty was, what it is, and what we believe it means. At some stage, we have a beginning. And we traveled a long, long line. And if we make this side the year 2009, then 1840 is only about here. And in all that long bit of time, we exercise this power to protect. And so when other people started coming to this land from other places in the world, it would seem to me obvious 
that we would want to keep being able to protect what it meant to be Māori. The Māori world was a complete world where there was complete sovereignty and authority and control and um, you know, guardianship, caretaking of the world, of all the relationships within it, and a readiness to interact with a bigger world once it was clear that there was a bigger world. That is a huge mind shift for people. In 2009, if you took all of the land that is left in the care of our people and put it together, it would only be 2%. That is an injustice. A relationship that actually demands interdependence has to be built on justice. In the presence of that history, how are we going to work together? How can we practice in the presence of history? So that's a question for anyone who produces works for their society, whatever that work might be. And the Pākehā educator is dealing with the responses that come when the, on the Tauiwi side they hear that information. How come when I was a student at school it wasn't taught to me? I think I already carry a fair amount of guilt, you know, based on what I know about our history and I feel a bit more guilty now. <laughs> <laughs> I see the aggrieved party as being Māori, you know, and I, I want to help, not, not kind of come at it from the other side. When I'm asked by a Pākehā person well, I, I shouldn't have to feel guilty for what my ancestors did. And my answer is no. But you should feel guilty if you do nothing to remedy what has been done. When a participant says that, on the one hand we're glad because they are naming a feeling, and then we always reframe it. Because guilt is just another name for feeling responsible. People can get crippled by guilt and go round and round and get frozen by it. Our role is to take them through that and to think, OK, what can you do about it? Working in a bicultural place is hurtful, mamai. It's, um, it's not nice to me. So I, um, I see this as a, a big challenge. It is a story of incredible pain. And on our side, we hear it as well. We do hear it. And so part of it is us figuring out how it can work as a project for you, but also how on the Tauiwi side, we can be in, stay in that relationship. I'm actually really tired of seeing our people consistently hurt in, in, in all sorts of ways. But the only solution we have actually lies in seeing what that treaty relationship is and just keeping plugging away really and all I'm hoping that this process is is, is just another step in that journey but I, I don't underestimate the, the difficulty at all. We're here for the Tangata Whenua side and for the Tangata Tiriti side. So for the side of all of those who have, of us who have ancestry where we're only here because of the treaty. We were invited to be here because of the treaty. So those are the two sides and that's why you're going to be paired that way too. What I have here is the envelope that you will find when you open it who you are going to pair with. Here we have six really talented people trying to give effect to what I think is the base of the treaty and that is respectful, respected relationships. So we're sea leaders and where it gets washed up, that's the battle right, between Tangaroa of the Sea and Tane and his children. Yep. So I started doing installations corrugated iron tiles. Yeah. So the whole thing is actually uh, Matara Maui, Maui's fish hook, or in other words, Hawke's Bay. I, I didn't expect to be kind of typecast so quickly as the, the, the tangata whenua person or artist. Um, I don't mind that, that role. I mean, the main thing is, is that we are tangata, we are people, first of all, and then we'll determine what this whenua business is about and what the tiriti side is about. Good, how are you? Good, how are you? How's your work going? Well, I uh, work for Te Wānanga Aotearoa. Uh, we're a tertiary provider and we're very much a uh, Māori 
uh, organisation that teaches from a Māori perspective. And what I like about that is that we're able to uh, maintain the legacy of our ancestors through the teaching, but also um, explore other possibilities that perhaps are non Māori. So it's a nice way of actually um, working with rangatahi and celebrating the past, but also contemplating, well, what's tomorrow going to be about? How can we shape that? The way I feel about uh, what has happened is not necessarily going to be constructive for going forward, you know, you yeah, mm. kind of have to um, um, you find a place to stand and, and move on from there, you know. I work in advertising four days a week. I've got a fancy title called Head of Art. I just help the teams with their art direction, with their ideas, if they need it. In advertising, you're trying to influence people to buy something, and so you have to be quite clever about that because people, most people, like oh, I don't really like ads. Try to avoid them, you know. So from the get-go, you've got to engage people and then get them to take an action. So it's a tricky task, and I think you get really good at that. And you can kind of apply that to art if you have a feeling or a notion or an idea that you want to express engaging somebody and getting them to change their mind or influencing what, how they think about something, that's, you're kind of doing the same thing. I don't feel morally that great about what I do given that I don't, I don't believe consumerism is the right way to go and yet I'm a, you know, yet I'm a, I'm a proponent of that or I'm a, you know, I'm a cog in that big machine, really. So I kind of, feel like on Friday I pay penance for my evil doing during the week. <laughs>